Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at Cycles X viewport performance, but before we get into that I need to let you know that this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and PC Specialist. They are working together under an initiative called NVIDIA Studio, which is where NVIDIA works with PC builders to design products for creative professionals. Now this initiative is all about empowering creators by maximizing the use of the NVIDIA GPUs. So if you take a look at the link in the description, you'll see there's a page for the PC Specialist website where NVIDIA has a list of their recommended specs for a wide range of budgets and you can customize them to your liking. To go along with this, NVIDIA has a specialist set of drivers for their GPUs called the NVIDIA Studio drivers appropriately, which are more performant and optimized for creative applications like Blender, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve and stuff like that. Pretty much anything that utilizes GPU acceleration for various tasks. So I wanted to make this video because Cycles X is here, it's been merged into the 3.0 branch, and one of the major key features about it that a lot of people are interested in is the extra viewport performance. Now I've already experienced this and I've been very happy with it with some of my other videos that I've done, especially the recent art breakdown. But I've always had this little voice in the back of my head going, oh, you should definitely go and take a look at some of the old heavy projects from like two or nearly three years ago that appeared on the channel, but were really like far too intense for cycles at the time. In particular, I'm thinking about the Nebula demonstrations for Eevee and the Asteroid Vector Displacement demo from Hans Chu. That one was okay, but it was a bit more of a multifaceted problem with that, especially regarding RAM issues. And I also thought we'd take the opportunity to talk about optimization for scenes as well later in the video. So things you can do to identify where the bottlenecks of your viewport performance are, and maybe even do a comparison between the different rendering modes, so CPU, CUDA, optics, because I always use NVIDIA GPUs anyway, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to try that out. So nebulae, nebulas, nebulae, whatever. Anyway, this demo was originally made for Eevee and it was done by having a volume inside of a cube and basically just defining it with the object material nodes. Now this is great in Eevee because it's a rasterization engine. The volumetrics are rendered on a card system almost. So as the volume gets further away from the camera, we're basically taking slices and rendering them together. And you can see this where we have these different layers going on here. So ideally we'd want to see this in cycles. So what I'll do is I'll find a nice structure like this, this nice pillar here and I will swap over to cycles. And here we go, we can see it resolving with all the samples. If I rotate the camera around now, we can see that as I'm doing this, the pillar is definitely visible all the time. Back in the day, I remember it was very difficult to resolve the samples and rotating the viewport was just not really viable. It was always kind of laggy. But the thing with Cycles X is even though it's just starting to grab those samples, we can definitely see the structure there, which definitely makes it a lot more viable to prototype the different looks for the volumes in Cycles X. So as I move this ramp around, we can see how it changes. Now we all know that when preparing this demo I did identify a point of optimization failure which is the detail levels on the generated noise textures. If you have these obscenely high values then it will be just a nightmare for cycles. Now it also depends on how many generated noise textures you're mixing together because in the color demos of this it's a lot more apparent but the samples will take longer to resolve if you're using higher values. So that's generally one thing to keep in mind if it's not really making that much of a difference to the visual say if I set this detail level down to zero we can see the structure completely changes and as I I scrub it all the way up, we can see we start to get the pillar to form there. But by the time we hit like the upper limits of 12 to 16, it's not really changing the structure anymore. So we don't need any higher value than that. Also, this detail level is capped at a soft limit at 16. You can push it further than that, just like many values in Blender, but it's not really recommended unless you know what you're doing. So we've got some lovely viewport performance going for the nebulas. That's great. But can we improve this? And I would say yes with the denoising. So if we turn that on over here in the viewport settings, I'm using the optics denoising because it's faster than the open image denoise. It resolves quicker. And as we rotate around now, you can see we can practically fly through this volume in what's essentially pretty close to real time, just using Cycles X. Now, of course, as we can see, there are definite anomalies around the edge of the volume. Now, this is quite expected because, of course, the input data for this denoising was quite noisy to start with, and it's also trying to calculate it around an area of high contrast. So we're going to get some weird anomalous results to start with, but as we leave it there, it will resolve over time. So I'm quite happy with this performance, actually. And again, I will make a note here that under Edit and Preferences, if we check System, I'm using Optics instead of CUDA. We can swap these while Blender is open, so if I go over to CUDA, then go back into Solid and then Rendered View, you'll notice that it's a bit slower. It's not a lot slower, just a little bit slower. So we can still get some good real-time performance. I like to stay with optics because it is faster, so why wouldn't I want that extra speed? Okay, so what about render times? Um, I'm gonna show you a comparison on the screen now. The first image here has Eevee. It rendered this frame in 4.95 seconds, so pretty quickly. The tile size for the volume was two pixels, so that's as low as you can go. And the render samples were set to 32. I really wanted to see if I could get Cycles X below 10 seconds for this, but I didn't want to compromise on the quality too much, but I didn't quite make it. The second one was Cycles X using optics, rendering in at 14.74 seconds at 100 samples, 1920 by 1080. And this was using optics denoising afterwards. Now the 4.95 and 14 seconds is not a particularly huge difference. When we think 
that we're making a direct comparison between a rasterization and a path traced engine, I think that's actually pretty damn good. For reference, the specs for my computer at the moment are 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 2080 Ti, and an i9-9900K, but I may soon have access to a much more beefy computer to uh, do more intense tests on. So apart from the obvious visual difference, they're pretty much the same quality level in terms of the overall image, but I still think a lot of people would prefer the EEV image despite this, simply because the lighting looks more interesting. But just because it's more interesting, it does not mean it's more accurate. Remember that EV is a rasterization engine, so the interpretation of a volume is kind of subjective. There's different ways to represent volumes in rasterization engines. But the main point here being is it's not using the same technique to render the volumes in EV as it is in cycles. So the representation of lighting affecting the volume is going to be different in both engines. Now, I don't quite know if I'm brave enough to show you the CPU rendering speed, Sod it, let's take a look. So if I go to none, so we're not using any GPU rendered devices, let's go to solid and then render it again. And yeah, that's not great. But again, fair play to cycles. We can still pretty much see the outline of the shape as we're rotating around, even though those samples are taking ages to resolve, especially by comparison to CUDA and optics. But we still have the denoising active. So what does it look like if we turn that off? Okay, yeah, that's, that's not... That's not great either. And I know that YouTube generally hates it when there's a lot of noise on the screen, so I bet I've turned into some weird compression monster. So let's hide that noise. Okay, I'm sure that rendering on the CPU then probably made some more weird stuff happen with my recording that I'll have to fix later. But I did actually do a render of the same frame from earlier using the CPU. And just to give you the results of that, it came out to a slick 5 minutes and 37 seconds, which is awful. It's a far cry from the 14.7 seconds from the Optics GPU version. So the render difference is obvious, but the viewport performance difference is actually not that different between them in terms of like what you're actually able to see when you're still moving around and it's resolving like that first sample. Just even though the viewport responsiveness is very similar between the CPU and the GPU versions, we're getting a much high quality result with the GPU ones. So I think that's really cool to see. And I might actually be more tempted to make more complex and able visualizations in cycles from now on, just taking advantage of this fact. Okay, so we're gonna move over to another demonstration. This is the asteroid scene from Hans Chu. Okay, so November is coming up and you know what that means? It's a month long challenge where every day there's a different task and people need to make something using nodes. I've done different videos on Nodevember in the past, it's a very fun challenge to take part in. It's also just a massive vanity contest for the community. But one of the interesting features that's made quite heavy use of during this month is vector displacement in Blender, which is where procedurally we can subdivide a surface and add more details. But the really cool thing about it is you can control how that happens using the material nodes. One of my favorite demonstrations that I showed in an older video comes from Hans Chu, and it's of a realistic asteroid surface. Now I can go into the nodes and play around with this however I like, and you can see that as I change these ramp values, values, the shape of the asteroid is going to change slightly. It's quite complex, it's made up of quite a few nodes, and we have full control over it because it's mathematical, it's procedural. The geometry is calculated when you enter the render mode, so you can see that as I go to the solid view, it's basically just a sphere, quite a low resolution sphere, and then as I enter the render view, it resolves down into a much more complex structure. The values that control this amount of subdivision are under the render settings and under subdivision, and we can see the dicing rate values. Anyway, viewport performance, back to the subject of the video. When I tested this, I was very happy about it, and I hope you will be too. Remember, we're using cycles, and check this out. We have a hyper complex asteroid object here, and as I'm moving around, it's practically real time. This is much faster than the nebula. I can zoom in, and the quality level is great. This is amazing. So obviously, the more we zoom in, the more the asteroid takes up the frame, and the more there is to render. As we zoom in more, you can see the weird shadowing where the polys exist. But we can increase the quality, as I said, if I take the viewport dicing rate and turn it down to something like one. It's quite dangerous, but here we go. It's going to take a minute to update, but we will end up with a much higher quality result. Here we go. So we can zoom in and we don't have any of that weird shadowing going on anymore because there are far more polys on the screen. With this high amount, I don't know how much it is. We can still zoom out and move around at an exquisitely fast real-time pace. And I think that's fantastic because this, this is going to allow for super speedy previews for November next month. So I think a lot of people will enjoy this. But still, as we're moving around, we can see that there's some noise issues happening in the shadowing areas. So these bright spots are what we might call fireflies. It's basically just trying to resolve the bounce lighting going on in the dark areas. But can we fix this? Again, let's try the denoising. Okay, I've turned that on. And you can see that as I rotate around now, we have no more fireflies. The thing is, the surface of the asteroid is getting a little bit blurry as we're moving, but it resolves very quickly. So I still think this is amazing. But it's up to you, it depends like how much quality you want to see immediately. So when I played with this, I thought, wow, this is like, we are getting really close to proper real-time speeds with cycles. But for some reason, I always have this bit of a weird feeling leaving it on a low dicing rate for the viewport. It's just a little voice in the back of my head saying, no, this is bad, you know, shouldn't leave it on that many polys. 
So I'm going to put that back up to five. But of course, you can change the dicing rate for the render as well separately. So if I went and performed a render now, of course, Cycles X has progressive rendering, so it's not on any tiled system anymore. There'll be a moment before it starts rendering, which is where the geometry is calculated again, just like when entering the viewport render mode. And then it begins to render. So I've got it set to 100 samples. Immediately, we've got a good result. That's still ticking along 20 something seconds. Realistically, I did not need 100 samples for this because you could tell how quickly it got us to a high quality level. But here we go. So we have a nice looking realistic asteroid. I think Hans True did an amazing job with this node tree because I feel like that's just like such a high quality procedural result. It even looks like there's little uh, bits of rocks that have just attached themselves to the asteroid over time. And with the shadowing, it looks like there's almost some concave areas going on. So yeah, for the last section of this video, we're going to go to my a recent art breakdown, the Keeper one, and I'm going to talk a bit more about understanding, optimizing your scenes for viewport rendering. So you can see it's a bit more of an intense scene. There's a lot going on. There's some procedural materials, some vegetation assets, and that will have their own levels of transparency as well. So there's quite a lot of stuff bouncing around. I mean, there's even emissive materials in the head here. So there's a lot going on for the renderer. I still think this holds up extremely well for the amount that is happening especially considering that the procedural material for the body is quite complex. It's the mega shader, but it's not as fast as I would like. Of course, we can try the denoising as well. And with the denoising, you can even, you know, turn down the samples that you're using for the viewport to try and balance it out. So if I wanted to speed this up, how would I identify the areas that's causing the drag, essentially? Well, the first thing I would go to is the procedural materials because they always slow it down. But the funny thing is, if I unplug this, in my mind, it doesn't really improve the speed that the samples are resolving, which is interesting because doing the procedural materials is always made such a massive difference on my previous scenes. Okay, so we'll think maybe it isn't the materials, maybe it's the vegetation assets at the back. So if I disable those, still not really making a big difference, right? Okay, that's interesting. So by turning things on and off and testing and comparing between different elements, you'll be able to get a measure of how well they weigh up against each other. So my point here is that if you have a complex scene, a good thing that you can do is isolate the different categories of your objects into different collections. So if you have your lights in one collection, then your objects using procedural materials in another one, then any like decoration assets in another one, then you can enable and disable these as you go and make comparisons between the performance impact on the viewport. That way you'll know if there's any specific area that's slowing down down the scene. It's something that a lot of people might forget about quite easily, especially as we said earlier, in regards to procedural node settings. If you're very careless with adding nodes together and forgetting about the values, you might not realize that 70% of that extra rendering time for the viewport comes from your procedural materials. So keep an eye on what you're changing, categorize the objects in your scene, and keep testing them as you go through to keep an eye on the performance. But there's also some other things you can do, of course. I've already done a video about rendering tips and cycles, but I'll make a quick note here as well. So if you press Control B and then draw a box, you'll be able to isolate a region for the rendering. This will, of course, improve the performance for that area because we need to forget about everything else in the scene and then to remove that region we can press Control alt and b and it will reset it back to how we had it so another thing you can do is because we're of course rendering outside of the camera frame here which is just wasting resources if you go into the output properties in the properties window then under the format you can go down to render region and tick that and it's basically going to restrict the rendering to the camera's frame so we don't need to render the stuff in the viewport that we're not going to be rendering out anyway so yeah these experiments have been really fun to play with it just goes to show that cycles x has really made some significant improvements for the viewport performance it's going to make stuff so much easier and faster to rapidly prototype when doing different types of art scenes even with that keeper artwork breakdown in my previous video, I made reference to the fact that the only reason I used volumes in this was because it was so much more performant than it had been before. So many times in the past I've made pieces of artwork with cycles where I thought, nah, actually it's not really worth waiting for the volumes to render in the viewport because it'll just make it so much less enjoyable. But now I think it's actually quite viable. So like I said, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and PC Specialist, which is quite appropriate because I rely so heavily on NVIDIA products to do all my renderings and work. And you've seen in this video just how much of a significant impact CUDA and Optics has on the rendering speed. I mean, especially when comparing the CPU to the GPU. I just, I offload all my rendering to the GPU now. I never use the CPU for any of it. So if you want to get your hands on a rig that's guaranteed to make use of the GPU, then feel free to have a look at the link in the description. Check out the recommended specs and just play around with it. It's quite fun to play with. Incidentally, the computer I'm using now was made by PC Specialist back when I wanted to upgrade. So I got PC Specialist to build it under my specs and test it, then deliver it so I could swap over it instantly. Also with PC Specialist, I got warranty on the entire machine as well. Also, I've always been super transparent with you about sponsorships on my channel. I never really take sponsorships unless they're super relevant or they're going to benefit the other content in some way. So let's all be very thankful to NVIDIA and PC Specialist for wanting to sponsor a series of videos on this channel. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed. We've got some interesting videos coming up. Have a great day and I will see you next time.